a guy with a metal detector finds a live World War II mortar shell in Tennessee. And it oh. definitely was unexplo- uh, unexploded, and it was live. Mm. That is, I worry about, I used to do a lot of metal detecting. I used to worry about coming across the, you know, a hand, I, I actually found a hand grenade one time. Um, and it was live. It still had the pin in it and everything. And, uh, you know, you, that's scary. You never know what you're going to come across, especially in some of the uh, foreign countries from World War II, landmines. I know you can go over right Indonesia, and there's landmines all over Vietnam even still. Oh, yeah. Well, they're still in Germany and in parts of Russia and Poland. They're still finding live bombs. I mean, they go out, and what they do is they they – there's a group that that are trying to recover the German soldiers and the Russian and American soldier bodies, the bones. And when they go out digging, and they do it quite often, they do find live, live ammo. And it, it's scary. You know, you, everything from mortars to you name it, live rounds. And then the, the German police have to come out and, you know, disarm them. Yeah, I just... Boy, I wouldn't want that job. I'll tell you that that um, that job can't have a long a long uh, career in that one. I don't know. I would never want to even think about disarming one of those. But I tell you, when I was a kid, I told the story once. My grandmother had a seventy-seven millimeter shell, I believe. Now I could be wrong, but it was a good sized shell. It was probably the size of the shell was maybe three and a half inches wide, and it had the firing pin. I thought it was, you know, a, I was a young kid. I didn't think anything of it. You know, she had it sitting on her bookcase and and uh I played with it like you wouldn't believe. I would toss it around and it had the, you know, the the uh a whole everything to it. And I oh, you wow. know, I, and one day I realized, you know what? This thing could be live. And you know, we called the local police department. They came and they said, "Uh yeah, this is live." I am surprised as a kid because I played off and on with that for years. I mean, I did everything you could think about tossing it, you know, doing, you know, playing war games with it, taking it outside, throwing it up in the sky and having it come down. And they could have took out the whole house. Of course, me too. Yeah, that is amazing. You were playing uh, roulette there, buddy. Let me tell you. You're lucky. It's amazing it didn't go off. It's a, it, plus, you, it, you imagine, because uh, a lot of kids, I used to take a hammer and beat on the end of things like caps and bust them. I imagine if you didn't know better and take a hammer and pound the, the uh, discharge on that. Yeah, the fu- hmm. yeah, that would have been really, the firing cap on that, that would have been a, a bang of a experience, wouldn't it? <laughs> you, you would have been uh, in, in 6,000 feet in the air when, with your own jet pack. Uh, you mean in pieces? <laughs> well, yeah, you said it. I didn't. I mean, this this is like this the, what they used to shoot in the tanks and stuff. That, oh yeah, jeez. Well, the, oh, it was not them. a seventy-seven. It was a one hundred five, I think. Okay, yeah, them things are huge. I remember American yeah. soldiers used to hear the the noise of them, and they'd be scared because they knew the damage they would do. Yeah, well, could you imagine? You know, throwing it up. God was on my side. Thank heaven. I wouldn't be talking to, you know, the one or two listeners we have on 20, <laughs> yeah. on, on 22 radio stations. How do you divide that two listeners and 22 stations? How does that come out? I, very uh, erratical. <laughs> kind of like the kind of like how many pieces you'd be in. Yeah, I probably, you know, a 10 year old boy in Northern Ireland spent a long time on a loom. Making a, a, a bracelet. He used 6,292 feet of yarn to make his uh, bracelet, and it broke the world's record. Oh, that's over, that was a, almost a mile and a quarter. That, or, that is amazing. Another Guinness record broken. I, that's what I never even thought of in yarn distance making a bracelet. That must be one heck of a bracelet. Let me tell you, that, that's a lot of yarn for a bracelet. I would think so, but he was making it to break the world record. Can you imagine an escape bull? Oh, boy. Running free. And the deputies, you know, gave up trying to catch it on foot. So they naturally decided to get some horses. (laughs) 
And I tell you what, it was one bowl of a job. <laughs> I mean, I got to tell you, unless you're a real cowboy, if you're getting on a horse, and especially a couple of people not very good horsemen, you're trying to get a mad, mad bull, that is a recipe for disaster. Somebody's going to get speared, horned, gored. Um, or all not, the above. They are all the above. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yes. I wouldn't want that job either. Well, you remember a while back they made a, a cake about a mile long with chocolate icing? Yeah, I was just thinking that when you was talking about that record, actually. Yeah, and then they made a taco. It was almost a mile long. Yeah. Well, yeah. nobody sent me any part of the taco. Nobody sent me part of the cake. But you know what? A Swedish bakery cooks up a 661-pound bun. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even know what to say about that. That's a mouthful. 661 pound bun. That's a lot of yeast rising right there. I, well, where do you cook that in? I, <laughs> I have no idea. But, you know, I, when I was a little kid, my grandmother used to make buns. And, oh, they were so good. But, you know what? They were kind of real light. You could put a string on them. And it almost felt like it would just go up to the ceiling, you know, or you could take it outside and, and it just float away. That's how light they were. And they had such a great taste. Her maple bars were the same way. I mean, they were kind of airy. You take a bite in it, you know, and it wasn't not much to it, but great flavor. But could you imagine how big? And it doesn't give the size of it. That's what's really interesting is. But a bun at 661 pounds, either it, it is a small bun with a massive amount of weight like concrete or it's a huge bun. <laughs> yeah, I know. I wonder if they got a steamroller and, and rolled it out. I mean, that's just amazing. I wouldn't even know how to begin to even bake something like that. That's just, that's what got me baffled. Well, could you imagine a red fox escapes from enclosure at Oklahoma City Zoo? And you come home <laughs> from work or wherever you were at. And you find it waiting on your porch for you. <laughs> it's a sly little fox, isn't he? Yeah. I wonder what he. Yeah, I wonder what he's waiting for, though. Hmm. Well, to me, it looks like it was probably waiting to go in the house to get fed. But you know, <laughs> yeah. can you imagine a fox? You know, you know, run away from the zoo and then finds a way. You know, wants to be loved by, you know, this somebody off the street. I guess. Yeah, and again. These animals, I, I, they're uprising against the humans between the bears, the snakes, and, well, squirrels. And now we got foxes doing a little bit of rebellion. Probably. Well, you know what? If you have a child that doesn't like reading, which most kids don't nowadays because they're into playing video games. Or they're <laughs> on Facebook. Face it, night and day. They very seldom you find young kids reading anymore. That's why I'm surprised there's still people writing books because newspapers, what happened to them? Bye bye. They're all virtually all non existent. In fact, one yeah, of the <laughs> yeah, all the major newspapers where I'm at are all gone. The only remainder one is now filed bankruptcy. They're going to be gone. It, it you know who reads much anymore if it's not on the internet? But evidently, you know, they're still trying to teach kids to read a book, which is very important because you know when you read, it takes you into the story. It, it makes you part of the story where if you just sit there and watch it on TV, you don't digest it. You, you know, you, you watch the whole movie afterwards. And if you ask a kid or even my wife sometimes, hey, what uh -oh. was the show about? Um, I really don't remember. But you watched it for two hours. Well, this <laughs> happened and this happened. And, but can you put the dots? No. That, but, you know, when you read, it stays in your brain for a while. You digest it. But anyway, you can now hire a Tom Hartley lookalike to k teach your kids to read. Now, you're saying, why would you want to hire a lookalike? Why not? <laughs> I don't even know what a Tom Hartley is. <laughs> but, you know, another problem, uh, a lot of these things, they'll read it to you. A lot of these uh, apps and things, they'll read the books to you. That's another thing. A lot of people don't even, like you said, they don't read no more for no reason. 
Oh, yeah, that, that, that's very true. Well, you know what? In Britain, they just, well, I won't say it, but I will say the first word is burger. And they have a crown. But anyway, <laughs> makes a new and introduces a new hamburger. Uh-oh. And they call it New Zealand's latest burger. <laughs> and basically what it has is a bunch of meat in it. Oh, it does. Or a little bit of meat. Oh. And, and a lot of French fries. <laughs> and, That's a new one. And ketchup. Wow. So and, people and, got tired of the other one, I guess. I get, but in Britain, they, they say, no, that is, ugh, we don't want it. I might have to agree with them. It didn't sound too uh, appetizing, but I will say I would eat it over that other one. Well, can you imagine, you love your dog a lot, right? So you go into a shoe store. You know, like, not like Al Bundy's shoe store, but you go into a <laughs> shoe store, right? Yeah. And you buy shoes. You you tell the clerk, I, I, I got a wife with really small feet. Can you show me some sexy shoes for small <sighs> feet? High heels. Well, guess what? Uh-oh. He bought two pairs of the same shoes for his dog. <laughs> oh, you're giving me bad visions in my head on that one. I, Lord almighty, I'd say the guy really loves his dog. <laughs> A little too much, maybe. <laughs> Goodness. Could you imagine you're applying for a job? Okay, I'm not going to say where, but it's a fast food restaurant. And then on the job application, you put your name down. Okay, Mr. John McChicken. (laughs) Mr. John McChicken. Yes, Mr. John McChicken. What a name. There's a few places he could get a job. He should be working somewhere in a fast food joint with a name like that. Yeah, he should own one with a name like that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, come come have a, a John McChicken sandwich. Yes. I mean, hey, yes. Uh, what is your name, sir? Uh, McChicken. What? <laughs> My name is McChicken. You got a problem with that? Oh, come on. You, what is your real name? I'm telling you, it's McChicken. What's your middle name? <laughs> Sweet and sour. <laughs> Cluck. Cluck McChicken. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah. no idea. What a name. That is a classic there. Well, could you imagine in England, somebody is offering 10 pounds to anybody who can kill this huge cockroach in his kitchen? What? That thing must be the size of a rat. I mean, they get all points bulletin. Have you seen this cock of the roach? <laughs> so there's a reward on it. Let's get a posse out and get this guy. Well, that I don't know. Point. I would go down to the pet store and buy a leash. And a collar. And there yeah. you'd have your pet. At least you can have it under control. But this sucker is huge. It's big as a rat. Oh, my goodness. I thought the Madagascar uh, cock of the roaches were the biggest ones, but maybe they're bigger. Well, maybe <laughs> maybe he didn't wash his dishes very, very good. It says he's a student, so he must evidently live by himself because he's offering a reward to somebody <laughs> Yeah. Can you, yeah, if you don't do your dishes everywhere and you got cockroaches, they're going to get big, aren't they? Yeah, maybe go to that school where they didn't, you know, clean and find that purse for 63 years behind the locker. <laughs> well, getting to my two sons' dogs for tonight. Oh, no. But we're going to have to wait after the break. You know that. I knew. I was going to say, we, we're cutting her close. Oh, yeah. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio. My name is Gary, and we have a full tank of gas tonight to take you down that paranormal ride. So stay tuned. At top of the hour, we're going to have Patrick uh, Cross. We're going to be talking about, well, his UFO experience, maybe his abduction uh, experience. And we're going to talk about, well, his 27 years experience as being a paranormal investigator here on Night Dreams Talk Radio. We'll be back. 